Imagine being able to add glow, beam, and light to your light sources with one single slider. Well, that's exactly what the Magic Light AI tool is for in Luminar Neo. And in today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to get the most out of it. And off we go into Luminar Neo, where we're starting in the catalog module. Just like always, we are looking at our sample files with a reminder that if you want to follow me along, jump into the description of this video, follow the link there, download the sample files and we can start. Now, upload the images, add them into the application and let's select the image with a beautiful bridge. Once selected, let's go into the edit module where we're going to look for the Magic Light AI tool. Now to do this, we need to go into our main editing toolbar here, navigate into the creative section and one, two and three. The third one from the top will be the Magic Light AI. Now, just like any other tool in the application, click on it to open it. And once we do that and make it nice and visible, we can see all the different sliders and controllers. Now, before we look at all of them, let's ask our friend Lumibot about how to use the Magic Light AI and what it's for. Thank you, Jakub. And hello, everyone. Let's add a little sparkle with Magic Light AI, the perfect tool in Luminar Neo for enhancing artificial light sources like street lamps, decorative lights, and even headlights. It uses AI to detect glowing points in your image and lets you control their intensity, glow, beam size, and even the number of rays. Whether you're editing holiday lights, night city scenes, or moody indoor shots, Magic Light AI brings that dreamy, cinematic glow. For best results, use it on photos with visible light sources. And don't forget, you can always mask specific areas for full control. Need help while editing? I'm ready at cleverphotographer.com slash Lumabot. Now, let's hand it over to Jakub to show you how it all works. Well done, my friend. Thank you so much. Okay, so moving into the tool. We have the intensity slider, size, beam width, glow, clearness, brightness, number of beams and rotation. Many of them on different values. But as always, the first thing you need to do is to activate the tool and it's done by using the intensity slider. Now we're going to be pushing the sliders around to really see what they do. So don't get scared. It's just so we can see what they really do to our image. <laughs> so let's start with the intensity slider and bring it all the way up. Just like that, with that magic slider, you can see that we see the new glow or element on our lights, on the street lights, right? Looking great. We have that kind of star effect and a glow around the light and it looks cool. We also see this little transparent cross or transparent square over the lights. And I will explain you in a moment what that does. So intensity slider. So we can basically adjust the amount of the effect by simply bringing it up and down. Now, generally around half works really well, but it's completely up to you and on your project. So let's bring it up so we can still see what the other controllers do. So after the intensity, we have the size slider. So let's take the slider, which by default is on 30 and bring it up. Now, by doing that, we getting basically a bigger size of that entire effect. These little rays are getting longer and the overall glow is getting bigger too. So that's the size. If you bring it all the way up or you can bring it down and make it really, really small, almost that you can see it. So anyway, yes, 30 by default which generally works really well, but you can add a little bit more. So let's go crazy. Now, after that, we have the beam width. For this, let's just zoom in a little bit. We can use the mouse on our mouse. We can use the wheel on our mouse and then we can use the space bar to move around. Now, looking at it, look at the beams here. We can adjust the width. Again, by default, they are on 30 and we can make them completely disappear by bringing it all the way down to zero which can work quite well if you just want to add a glow or you can make them much bigger. So basically just take them 
and really push them to make them really thick. Again, completely up to you, completely up to the effect you are creating. So that's the beam width. Now, you already see me working with the glow, which again is by default on 30. By bringing it up, you add more glow and bringing it down, you remove the glow. So that's the glow. Again, back to our light here. And let's continue. A little bit of glow, a little more beam width, and into the clearness we go. So with the clearness, one more time, third time lucky, <laughs> default on 30. So clearness, if we bring it down, you will notice that basically the beams and the glow and everything just melts together. It's like this one massive glow with different layers. Where? If we bring it up, you will see that the shape of the beams will become very defined. It's like these super defined beams going to a different sides. So that's the clearness. You're basically just making them more soft and you're making them more defined. So it's up to you. Now again, by default, 30 I think works really well, but you can adjust it here. So let's just add a little bit, around 40. After that, we have the brightness. Well, you can imagine what this one does. By default, it's on 50. When we bring it down, that will remove the brightness from the middle. It will just keep pretty much the light in the beams. And when we go the other way around, it will make it super strong around the light there. Now, after this, two really simple sliders, number of beams. So right now on seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we can again bring it down to two, which can look really cool. And it's an effect which looks uh, pretty cool on cars, for example. Or we can also bring it up to make it super, super crazy like this, where I think the top is 24. Uh, talking about the number of beams again, this also looks really cool on Lighthouse. If you're editing a, a landscape and there is a lighthouse there and you need to add the effect, this can work really well. And if you need to adjust the rotation of the beams, well, that's the next slider by default on 50, but moving it one way will rotate it in one way and moving it the other way will move it and rotate it the other way around. So full list of adjustments, right? I mean, again, we can adjust the rotation we can adjust the number of beams, the overall brightness, the clearness or how much the beams are defined. We can add or remove the glow. We can adjust the beam width, making them disappear completely or really thin or really, really thick. Adjust the size of the overall effect and again, adjust the intensity. Wow, so many adjustments. Now, whenever we adjust these sliders, we can, of course, look at the before and after using the eye icon. We can also <laughs> reset the tool by clicking on this little arrow. And we have a little more information about the tool by clicking on this little eye icon here. OK, so for this image, let's reset it. Click this, increase the intensity just a little bit, nothing crazy. I think we need a little bigger size, so let's go crazy around 52. I would add a little bit more glow, maybe adjust the beam width, just make it a little bit smaller. In my case, I would make them completely disappear because I'm not a big fan of them, but if you want, you can keep them there. Clearness, maybe just a little less. Brightness, a little bit more. Number of beams, yeah, let's go a little bit higher. Rotation is good, and that would be about it. But that's not all. Once I hover over the image, you can see that all these lights have these little transparent squares on them. Well, do all of them have that? Uh, let's zoom in towards the end of the bridge here. And you will notice that most of these lights have these little uh, transparent forms over them because the tool automatically picked them up. But it didn't pick all of them, <laughs> like these little lumps here. So what can you do? Well you can basically brush the effect in. Well, brush the effect in when you switch on Add. So for example, I can make the brush a little bit bigger, around 28, make one click, and that will add the light into this street light. Or I can again click here and add it here and actually go quite quickly. Now, if you need to adjust the size of the brush, you can use the bracket keys or the little slider and click again. If it's not big enough, just brush a little bit more and that will add it. However, for example, in this case, you can see that there are actually two lights and the application automatically created just one effect. 
what, what can we do here? Well, we can use the X on our keyboard to switch into delete, or we can just click on delete, very simple. Make the brush a little bit bigger and actually brush the effect away, just like in this case here. After this, back to add, adjust the size again, 30 will do. Brush over one light, second light, and now it looks more like it should. So with that, with our add and delete, you can add or remove the effect. So one more time, let's say that we don't want it here. We remove it, whoop, it disappears, or we can add it. So let's say here. Now, what happens if you brush away the effect and you can't actually remember what was there? Was there the effect or no? Well, in this case, we have the third option here called store. And when we click on that and make the brush bigger, when we brush over the parts, it will automatically restore the initial automatic selection. So there you have it. How cool is that? Now, on the top of this brush control or brush adjustment, you also have the masking, which you can use, of course, to adjust it even further. You have the traditional options here, including brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, color, luminosity, mask AI, and object select. Okay, well, that's masking, that's adjustment. So now you know how to use the tool. However, what if you are working with image like this and there is no light at all? Can you actually use the Magic Light AI to add it? No, because the Magic Light AI, in most of the cases, need at least little source of light to follow. So what can we do? Actually, it's really simple. What we're gonna do? We're gonna open the Develop tool and zoom in closer to our street lamp here. Now Let's just make sure that we can see them. That's cool. And before we adjust anything, we're gonna go into the masking. In the masking into the brush, we go where we want full softness and full strength. Size, well, just a little bit bigger than the light bulb. So I'm thinking around here. And all we're gonna do, one click over the light. So just like that, one click. Then over the second bulb here, another click, and one more here on this light bulb here. Now, moving down a little bit, there is one more light here. So let's zoom in and let's just make the brush a little bit bigger and we're gonna just paint over this light bulb here, like that. So with that done, we can now return into the adjustments where we're gonna increase the exposure. So we're gonna go crazy. We're gonna bring it all the way up to five. And what we have done, well, we have added that initial glow we need for adding our magic light AI effect. Now, if you think that this is too wide, you can always go into the color and increase the temperature to make it a little bit more warm. So let's say that we go to around 70, maybe a little bit of tint as well, around 20, and that's that. Close the develop tool, down we go into the creative section again, open the Magic Light AI, and here, increase the intensity. So now we have the effect coming. Is it perfect? Not yet. We need bigger size. That's one thing, definitely. More glow would be another thing. And for some reason, it created double effect over these two lumps. So just zoom in. Let's go ahead and delete this. Make the brush bigger. Again, bracket keys for that. Add and just one click over the lamp post or light right there. Similar on the other side, delete brush a little smaller, add, and one brush stroke there. This, how does it look? Well, if we need to redo it, we can still delete it, add. Let's make sure that it's over the light bulb. There is good. At the bottom, is it too big? Maybe let's just delete it. Adjust the size, yeah, somewhere around here. And just like that, add it. Now, once we're done with that, we can, of course, bring the intensity down a little. Maybe adjust the size if it's too big, adjust the glow, beam width, well, maybe a little bit thicker, yeah. Clearness down just a little, brightness a little bit more. Number of beams, do we want more? Maybe, maybe around 11. Rotation can stay the way it is. And quick check before and after, and there you have it. So to recreate light in the street lamps, just add simple glow using the develop tool and masking, and then continue just like I show you with the Magic Light AI. Finally, before we're going to leave, just two more examples of what you can use this amazing tool for. Christmas trees work super, super well, just like in this case, you know, you can add extra glow, you can really play around with it, glow, 
or add the beams and so much more. And also, as I told you, it can work really well on cars, for example, as a look before and after, just like that. So much more you can do, lighthouses, houses, any sources of light, Magic Light AI is your friend. So there you have it. This is how you use Magic Light AI tool here in Luminar Neo. But that's not the end. Continue learning. Keep moving forward on your photo editing journey with video for every single tool in this photo editing application on our YouTube channel at Clever Photographer.